What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. We have some great things going. Another week seven recap. This time we're going to focus on UNC Miami and Duke and Virginia games the past weekend. We know that it was wild, but of course, we got to get an expert on the show. So JJ Jackson from Locked on Blue Devils is joining me, and we are going to talk through some very serious conversation. I mean, yesterday we were talking about Dino Babers. Today we might have to have that coach cut come to Jesus. I don't know. We'll see what kind of energy JJ brings, but let's get ready and let's get started. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On ACC Podcast. Thank you for making our podcast the first listen every single day. We know that it's free and available wherever you listen to your podcast. We're hoping that you are listening on YouTube, you're watching our lovely faces, or you're listening to wherever the audio plays out of your dials. Okay, JJ Jackson in the building, Locked On Blue Devils. We got a lot to talk about. We got Carolina, Miami, we got Duke, Virginia, and then we got to talk about your game of the weekend, but in not in that order, but it's fine. I'm rolling here. JJ, welcome to the show. Candace, I'm excited to be here. Uh, we continue to move along in this college football season. The temperatures outside get a little cooler. Basketball season right around the uh, horizon here, and uh, things are heating up in conference football competition. So I'm doing well and excited to break it all down with you here today. Absolutely. Listen, there was a little breeze this weekend that I wasn't quite <laughs> expecting, right? We had, we had countdown to crazy. We had late night going on. We had college football in the triangle area. It was a lot of good stuff, but overall, oh yeah. And the fair, we can't, can't miss out on <laughs> exactly. life. Is, life is only fair two weeks in October over here in these North Carolina parts. And so I'm like debating if I'm going to go dive in for a turkey leg. I'm like, it's still a pandemic. I'm going over <laughs> through things, right? So I'm trying to reckon with myself on what I should do, but I wanted to get right in to things. Having you here, of course, you give us that inside look with Duke Blue Devils. And of course, the the Virginia game was one that we wish we could have back, right? You always have one game of the season where you just know you could have stepped up better, you could have played better, all of those things that you just get frustrated. And after a while, you hate saying the same things, but I would love to hear from you just as a whole front overall, what were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I mean, just to be honest and, and quite frank with you, Candace, this Virginia game was one where you turned it off pretty quickly, right? I mean, there was just not a lot of competitive fight from either side of the football from Duke. They turned the ball over four times. They don't put up any points on the board. This Duke football team, believe it or not, is third in the entire conference in yards per game offensively, and they mm. really couldn't consistently move the football. They do finish with 325 yards of offense, but they averaged nearly 500. So Virginia did a great job defensively kind of scheming them up. Vernon Armstrong, we know that he throws for a million yards. <laughs> he really didn't even have to do that against Duke on Saturday because the defense wasn't competitive whatsoever. And so, uh, yeah, just really, really disappointed. Coach Cutcliffe called it a gut check after the fact. I think it might have been a little bit more of that because uh, – that was pretty pathetic. Yeah. I mean, one, I thought usually Duke thrives in the elements, right? They get a little element love on their side. If it's raining, the other team might fumble and, you know, Duke can capitalize. Yeah. But you would just see Duke get in their own way so many times. Can't – they would have, like, great opportunities to get off the field and to be a penalty. Or they would just didn't know how to – they let – uh, Virginia run all over them or defensively we're talking about bad Virginia defense all season and yet they made uh, Duke made Virginia defense look like they were some stellar studs about to get their names called when we have the draft here so I would just love to know you know from a Taylor Durant standpoint right only 82 yards we're used to him having 200 plus at times what were your what do you think his frustrations might be you know trying to get this offense forward yeah, I mean, look, I think it's gotten to the point in the year for Mateo Durant where everybody in college football and definitely everybody in the ACC knows that he's really good at what he does at running the football. And so how can you find ways outside of that to be more effective? 17 for 82, so that's still an average of nearly five yards per carry. That's still some of the top marks that we're seeing in the conference. But he's getting no help outside of that, Candace. And then Duke finds themselves in a passing situation that side of the football has been so inconsistent throughout this season, and uh, it's made the job more difficult for Mateo Duran. I don't think there's much, much much else that he can do. All of last year in 11 games as the secondary back, he had 817 rushing yards. He's already surpassed that mark. 
through the first seven games of the season. So he's doing an incredible job playing football for Duke. He just needs a little bit more help from his teammates. And listen, I thought that Gunnar Holmberg was going to be the answer because it couldn't get much worse than Chase Bryce. And it's not even, I mean, Gunnar clearly protects the ball a little bit better despite the fact that he had two interceptions in this game. But it just seems like the confidence isn't there, right? It seems like he's just always overthinking it or trying to do too much or playing hero ball when he doesn't have to. And then you end up doing silly mistakes. And it just seems like overall – they can't ever get things going in a rhythm where they can go up multiple times and drive down the field. And I think that's what's frustrating as a fan to watch because you just know and you see the potential on the page and it just can't deliver. But talking about that defense, how do you let 48 – how do you let them put 48 on you? I just want yeah, to know. <laughs> it's tough. I mean, it's uh, something you got to figure out moving forward. Um, I think the fact that you turned the football over four times made it easier for Virginia to have – uh, not as far to go down the football field. And the right. fact that you're on the field a good bit, it, it I mean, then just things add up. And when you're just completely out of the game, when it's 34 nothing at halftime, Candace, you've kind of lost all forms of hope. So yeah. I'm just kind of fortunate it was only 14 second half points for Virginia <laughs> the way that first half looked. I thought it would have been a way lot worse than that. Uh, but look, just the first two interception game for Gunnar Holmberg, that he's had this season for Duke. You mentioned Chase Bryce. It's not even close how much better this guy has been. And yet that shows you how sad Duke football was a year ago because for a quarterback to have six touchdown passes and six interceptions through seven games in the season, you'd love to see more from your quarterback, and Duke's just not getting that right now. Absolutely. And let's just sit here and say that Duke's schedule is not getting easier. They have a bye, but then they face Wake Forest, <laughs> an undefeated, currently undefeated Wake Forest. They have to face Pittsburgh, who is telling everybody that they are top of the coastal. You got to play Virginia Tech, who's probably a pissed off that they're not sitting the yep. top of the coastal. Got to play Louisville. And then Miami, Miami could be a game that you might mess around and win. Who knows? But that could be Manny Diaz's last way on, the, on his way out, because I think that if Manny Diaz loses to a Duke Blue Devil team, I don't know that he gets back on the bus. I'm just saying. But yeah. overall, I feel like there's still winnable games in here. But you're absolutely right when it comes to Coach Cutcliffe. It is a gut check. They're going to have to figure out how to kind of elevate and find deep, deep, deep down <laughs> what we got going on. But I also think that Nina King has a tough decision on her hands, the athletic director, if we say, how do we have this exit plan working, right? We saw with – Coach Ogeron, he's out, right, for way different reasons. But to have an exit plan to where can you finish the season, still coach the same way, but know that it might be might be that time. Yeah, I mean, look, the coaching carousel in college football is always something to watch every single year, and it could be uh, another great year coming up here after this 2021 football season. We already have the Southern Cal job open, as you mentioned, over the weekend. We learned that uh, at the end of the season at Orgeron, will no longer be the head football coach of LSU, two years removed from a national championship. James Franklin is a name that has been attached to a lot of jobs out there at Penn State. That would be then a school that is open and needing to look for a new head football coach. What does Miami do with Manny Diaz, somebody that we've talked about uh, quite a bit? And then does Duke decide to ultimately move to change and move on from David Cutcliffe? So uh, it's going to be fun to watch, that's for sure. Is a Duke football head coaching position desirable to you? No, I mean, <laughs> if, if we're being honest, like it's a basketball school, right? And hmm. there's nothing uh, about the current state of the program that makes it all that desirable. Sure, you're playing in the Power Five. Sure, you're uh, playing in a conference that has Clemson in the college football playoff conversation every year. And hopefully Notre Dame can get factored in the mix at some point. Florida State has a national championship within the past decade. But Duke can't sell out Wallace Wade Stadium, right? Mm -hmm. Duke can barely fill it 50% uh, on good days, on good game days. And so until you can find a coach who makes it a desirable job for others after he leaves that position, I don't see how you could call it one. I mean, I feel like you have to have someone who's ready for a great resume boost. Like, you know, that's not the final stop. Like, you know, you're not coming back to rebuild. Like, it's just one of those places where you build it up and you put it on that bullet point and you go on about your way. But I will say, I think that Duke football has the opportunity to have guys with high IQs, right? You're going to have well-educated young men. I think you have the opportunity to be great, to win the state kind of uh, battle every single year. You have the opportunity to beat state. You have the opportunity to beat UNC when you guys play. So I think, you know, it's, 
I know people say like, oh, don't take Duke, but it's a really, I don't know, it's really nice. Like they're yeah. really friendly over there because they know they kind of sing. It's not as hardcore. There's no pressure to me. So if I'm a coach, I'm saying, hell yeah, give me that Duke job. Let me just try and Correct. make, if we get, if I get a 500, <laughs> above 500 record, I'm doing great. Right. If I win four games, I'm doing excellent. So, no, I I think it's one of those where if you're trying to build that resume, I would consider Duke. But that's just me. All right. So as we transition, we got to talk about UNC and Miami. And I know that you probably have some thoughts because I definitely do. But before we do that, college football fanatics, I want you to know about Prize Picks, the daily fantasy made easy. I love this and I know you will too. Prize Picks is a leader in college sports daily fantasy. And I have had the opportunity to try and get my picks in because I know that I love winning. And it is really between me and my projections. If I use the award winning app on both, I use it on App Store, but you can also use it on Google Play. The entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Don't hesitate and check out prizepicks.com. Use promo code locked on or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models. It's now impossible to, for your local chain parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind you on the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand their warehouse happens to carry. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably below for every customer. They have everything you need. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car, truck, right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box, so they know we sent you? Amazing selection, reliably below prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Please visit rockauto.com. All right, I'm here with J.J. Jackson from Locked on Blue Devils. Had a very pointed conversation about those Blue Devils getting whooped on by Virginia Cavaliers. But on the flip side of things, we had a 40-point 40, 40 game over there in Chapel Hill, but that was much, much closer, 42-45. to 45. Carolina decided that it was going to defend home as best as they could. It was one of those games that I happened to be in attendance as an alum, alumna, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to enjoy, right? I'm going to actually not get invested, and I recognize that this is, I can't do this. I am no longer allowed to go to games because I don't know how to just be a regular fan. I'm too intense. JJ, <laughs> I, might need, I might need a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Like, I get way too involved. I'm, like, yelling at the defense. I'm like, can't just sit down. It's not as deep. But you saw during the game, they really just wanted to give it up, and I was just like, okay. If they lose this game to this Miami team, I don't know if I can come back. I don't know if I can show my face. I don't know if I can even talk about this show on Tuesday with JJ because I'm going to ask myself, what are we actually doing there and who is getting fired first? <laughs> JJ, what a, were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I mean, that was one of the biggest things for me, Candace, is I thought this game was over, right? You go into halftime, a field goal right before uh, the break. It's 31-17. to 17. You're feeling good about it. Uh, Miami doesn't look that competent as they have been all season long. And the next thing you know – you kind of keep looking at the bottom ticker and, and Miami's starting to get back into the football game and they're starting to make it more of a contest. And all of a sudden it's a three point margin with three minutes to go and can North Carolina kind of close them out and find a way to win the football game, which ultimately they do. But yeah, Candace, I'm watching it at halftime and I was like, there's no reason to watch the second half. No shot. This thing gets close at all. And sure enough, they kept fighting. JJ, I went to the bathroom. I got myself a libation. I came back and I said, when did Miami score again? <laughs> I'm confused. Why is it 38-31 of this? I don't understand what we're doing here. I'm frustrated. And I was just like, okay. Obviously, I can't move. Or even when I came, I went to the bathroom twice and I came back and we scored. And I was like, all right, I'm leaving. And I promise you, I went and stood in the aisle section. because I was like, let me just, I'm a jinxy person. I'm getting too emotional. But Overall, Tyler Van Dyke had a he had a decent debut for having to play an away game as a starting quarterback, 264 yards on the day. And I think that, you know, when you're going up against a guy that has been having being in that Heisman conversation, he held his own for sure. And I think that having the help of Knighton and Mike Harley and Charleston Rambo, those are the kind of guys that stood out. But I think also in the run game, you saw Knighton kind of step up in ways that we haven't necessarily seen. And Miami's defense was able to capitalize a 
definitely stop Sam Howell and yeah. swallow him up in the backfield. He's been trying to do everything for them. But when we the news came out today that Joffrey Brown, the receiver for Carolina, decided to transfer, I've been saying all season, where's the boy at? Where why are we not making plays for him? I mean, he can have a 75 yard touchdown if he wants it in the blink of an eye. And yet maybe he was upset that Josh Downs had become the man. Right. I don't know. Do you think nowadays, though, is it easier for kids to just be like, oh, I'm not getting the playing time I want or things aren't directed at me? I'm like, I'm gone. Or should they fight a little bit harder to kind of wait it out and see? 100 percent. It's easier. I mean, and, and and look, it would be great to say, yeah, fight it out, see if you can get on the field. But everybody's situation is different. And I certainly don't want to speak for that. But the fact that Joffrey Brown did decide to transfer, I'm shocked by that, given who yeah. his brother is, given the connection yeah. that he's got there in Chapel Hill. And, you know, you would have loved to see what that could have looked like if the offense would have featured both him and Josh Downs prominently. Josh Downs has had a remarkable season for North Carolina. He's one of the top, and in my opinion, the best wide receiver that we've got in the conference. And so for that reason, Joffrey Brown decided, you know what, I'm ready to move on and, and kind of do my own thing elsewhere. So, yeah, I was stunned by that. But um, really, you think that uh, this is probably going to be something we see more frequently in the years to come, given the state of the transfer portal and how easy it is to kind of say, hey, I'm ready to go play somewhere else. I'll be eligible right away for the first time at least. So why not look and see who's out there and kind of interested in my services? No doubt. And what's crazier is like his brother was literally just there at the Virginia game when they blew them out. He was hyping them up. Everyone was into it. He got the amazing it's touchdown. It's so weird. Like, it does not last. It's so emotional. I do not understand it. I mean, I get wanting to play, but, like, also, if you got you got to catch the ball. Like, yeah. if there's things right in your bread basket and you drop it, I understand getting frustrated, but you got to live to see another down. And I don't know if him and Longo had beef. I really don't know the inside right. I wish I did. But, I, I, you know, I wish everyone the best with whatever system they want to be in. But I also think that Carolina needs to start asking themselves those kind of questions. If you have guys like Joffrey Brown wanting to leave, is it something in your system that's not working? Because you're obviously not playing up to your potential and you're losing guys who you guys prided yourselves in, right? I had these five-star recruits coming, all this kind of blah, blah, blah. That's great but can they stay? Can you retain right. them? Are they getting the kind of playing time that they need? But more importantly, are they productive on the field? Are you coaching them up? Are you doing the right thing? So I think that's what frustrates me most about the situation is that I know somebody going when it's said and done. They have to. Like, you cannot keep both Bateman and Longo. And I would lean more towards Bateman, but, you know, I'm just me. That's me being me. I don't think defense has gotten better as a whole. Like, I don't see the growth that I wish I could see, in my opinion. I think there have been a lot of kind of disappointing factors for North Carolina's season. I think Sam Howell is part of that conversation as well. I think a lot of people had really, really high expectations for him, and I do think ultimately he's going to have a successful career at the next level. This year, um, playing for North Carolina for the Tar Heels just wasn't as great. I mean, to win that game 45-42, to have the number of points scored in that game, and yes, Sam did run for two touchdowns, but to look at the box score and see just 154 passing yards, I know he's better than that, Candace, but that number is just far too low for a North Carolina football team that's got number seven at quarterback. You know, JJ, this is why you can't hype up Carolina. You can't. <laughs> they have to be the underdogs. He had to be the one, the dark horse that maybe was in right. the Heisman conversation midseason. If you all this hype in the beginning, you just too much. It was too much. And I think that's what it was ultimately their downfall. They they assumed that they were this good without having to do it on paper. And evidently it's coming to pass. But you know, they still got a couple great games left, right? They still have great opportunities to play the Wake Forest of the world. But their next game after the bye is Notre Dame. Jesus, help me, Lord. Like, I'm praying to touch down Jesus right now myself, saying, how are we going to step up in big ways underneath the lights at 730? We all know what our 7 o'clock games look like here in Chapel Hill. But anywho, let's go ahead and get things rolling. I want to know your favorite game of the weekend because I'm sure you had one. But I want to remind you guys about Sweat Block, all right? If you have not yet had the opportunity to try Sweat Block, you are certainly missing out. Out. It is a great opportunity to just feel confident when you go each and every day. It stops the excessive sweat for up to seven days per use. It is doctor created and doctor recommended dry shirt guaranteed. I have seen friends who have had the opportunity to wear sweat block themselves. They always felt like they were overdoing it whenever they went out. They were not feeling confident. They wanted to make sure that they could just go out, wear the t-shirt that they loved and feel flawless. And you can absolutely do that with sweat block. If it doesn't keep your 
keep you dry, your shirt dry, and get your money back. Not just for your armpits, but you can use it on your chest, back, feet, hands. You can use it anywhere. And I do mean anywhere. <laughs> Alrighty. That sweats. If you or someone you care about is dealing with excessive sweat, you have to check out Sweat Block. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with promo code locked on or at CVS and Amazon. So we're wrapping up today's show here with JJ Jackson from Locked On Blue Devils. You make sure you guys follow him, get all that content because we know, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Countdown to Crazy was this past weekend, and I'm pretty sure things are going to get spicy over there in Durham. Are you excited about basketball season? Three weeks away from today. Here we are on another Tuesday. Three weeks from today, Duke and Kentucky in the Champions Classic. Mike Krzyzewski playing against the Wildcats, who he's had a number of great moments against in his coaching career to tip off the season. So, yeah, really, really excited for basketball season to be right around the corner. Yeah, I I, I love that he doesn't want to think about it being the last one. I, would lo- I like the idea of savoring it. Let's just play. Yeah. When it's all said and done, the last one, we walk up the elevator, we have our time. But I really just want to be in the moment, and I appreciate that about him because it's you do that for the players too, right? You don't want to make it put more pressure than they probably already feel. Right. <laughs> it's like, I got to win the championship. Smart. They know what's going yeah. on. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I appreciate that from Coach K. Can't wait for basketball season. No doubt. Well, we had a weekend full. We talked about Miami. We talked about Carolina. We talked about Duke. We talked about Virginia. But was there a game that you really just couldn't get enough of this weekend for week seven, our final recap conversation? Yeah, I think, you know, we, we talk about Virginia Tech a good bit uh, every time we converse. And, and they had a game with Pittsburgh this past week. And, and just their play in the Coastal has been kind of crazy so far this season. A three-touchdown victory on the road for the Panthers was just so impressive. Kenny Pickett continues to have a great game after great game, takes care of the football for Pittsburgh and gives them chances to, uh, to win. So uh, loved him, uh, his performance on Saturday there at Lane stadium. And uh, I guess Pittsburgh's kind of the team to beat here down in this final stretch in the coastal division. For the weekend, you mentioned Kenny Pickett and him high flying, but I would like to ask you because on yesterday's show, Ken Gibbs said that Kenny Pickett is not a first rounder, and I would like to know your thoughts because I need someone a little bit smart. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I don't know. And, uh, to be fair, I'm not the greatest at evaluating NFL draft talent. I think a lot of guys were going to be way better players than they actually turned out to be, and some guys <laughs> were like, "Yeah, there's no shot." He's going to be relevant on Sundays, ended up being relevant on Sundays. Yeah. That quarterback spot, you look at this year's class, you look at the next couple of class, like we knew Tua, we knew Trevor Lawrence, we knew Joe Burrow when he kind of came onto the scene that those guys were going to be the big names. I don't see that right now in the sport, which allows for somebody like Kenny Pickett to sort of emerge and want NFL teams to kind of want to draft him and then see what he looks like at the next level. So uh, I would not be surprised if he was successful whatsoever. But Candace, I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if he was a bust too. <laughs> I love that. But let's let's keep it a band. It's all a guessing game. It's a glorified yeah. guessing game. You hope that it works out, but you don't really know. Like, yep. Yeah, you see something special, but we, we've seen a lot of special things, right? And it couldn't pan out to be nothing. But no, I appreciate the honesty because there's also a lot of people here who are very hard set and knowing what they know and then yeah. they mess around and be dead wrong. So no, I vibe with that. I vibe with that. You know, JJ, it's always fun to talk to you. I think that Virginia Tech you know, when they, when you evaluate their play, it's kind of like you guys are supposed to be great when you want to be, but you also, but I don't know. What does that say about the Carolina team that they played to open the season? Could they play them now and they'd be the same outcome? I'm not sure. But then again, I don't know what kind of Carolina team I'm getting. I'm getting one who dominates Virginia or the one that barely can beat Miami. So I think that's, what's great about the coastal. You just never know what you're going to get. But I mean, I also felt like NC state and Boston college was pretty impressive for NC state side. Like they're rolling. Never thought, thought they would be rolling and we could talk about them confidently i was like oh they're gonna drop one we're gonna have this oh see this is why we don't get hype on them conversation but that's not happened yet and you know i can't wait to talk junk about them so yeah. goodness but it's all good it's all good jj it's always a pleasure to have you on the show thank you so much for dropping by can you please remind folks of where they can find you follow your work sure thanks again candace for letting me be unlocked on acc here on tuesday follow me on twitter at underscore jj underscore jackson underscore And check out Lockdown Blue Devils wherever you get your podcasts. We're on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. I will see you next week, Candice. 
You sure will. And listen, we've got some power rankings going down tomorrow with AJ Black from Locked On Boston College. You do not want to miss that. Make sure that you guys tune in. You can follow us again wherever you get your podcasts. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you have a great rest of your day. And until next time.